So today I want to talk about how the Arabic letters will change depending on whether they're in the beginning, in the middle, or the end of a word, or whether they're isolated. Um, it's kind of one of the more challenging things about the Arabic script is the letters will change depending on what position they are in the word. And the letters um, are consonants and the vowels are written as diacritic marks above and below. So get started with Aleph. So Aleph, as we know, looks like this. Usually has a Hamza on top. And when it starts out, when it starts a word, it looks like this. And so, to give you an example of a full word, we'll put al. Al-qalb. So here, it's right in the beginning, al-qalb. Al-qalb. To see it in a second position, we'll use the word ma, which is a preposition. Ma. It can mean what, it can mean no, or negate certain sentences, um, depending on the context. But that's alif in a second position. So you can see here how it connects to the letter before it. Now we can change this by adding one extra letter. The Hamza. Now it's ma, ma, ma. So this means water. And so you can you can say al ma, which means the water, or you can say ma'un, which means a water. So, ma, And you'll notice it does not connect to the letter after it. So, we can also try this word here. Which is haqa'ib. Haqa'ib. And I'm not, you don't have to worry about memorizing these words or anything. I'm just simply using them as examples. So, haqa'ib. So the alif is here. You can see how it connects to the letter before it, but not anything after it. Haqa'ib. Haqa'ib. I'll give you another example. And that means bags, by the way. Another example is... Kitab. Kitab. So you can see here, we have the alif does not connect to the bat. Kitab. Kitab. So, that is Aleph in different positions. Um, let's try bat. So, bat is a bold letter. As you might remember, it's a bold letter. Um, so another one, it's written the same way as tat and that. So ba ta tha. Okay. And these I want to put um kind of a special emphasis on here. Because they're all bold letters. There, I put them in a group, so I call this a letter group. So all of these letters here, they all will function the same when they're put in a beginning, intermediary, or a final position in the word. So the bold letters. So I'm going to give you an example, and I'm going to use all three of these here in my examples. So.
So here, this word is batatha. You can sound it out. Batatha. 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 It's not a real Arabic word. I'm just using this for example. Batatha. Batatha. And so this, um, these letters, when they're put together, they almost make like waves in an ocean. So you'll have the initial one, a middle one, and then the final one, you can see it's written as a, an entire bowl. So this one would be Thataba. Thataba. So when it begins, it begins like this, and then it'll connect to the next thing. Go up and connect to the one after in the middle position. Then at the end, it makes a full it's connected here, but it makes a full bowl. Let's so make this one ta. We'll make this one tha. And we'll make this one ba. So ba tha ta. Okay. So these bowl letters, they all function the same like that. Um, there's other language groupings too, or I mean uh, letter groupings that we'll get to also as we go along. But this is how these letters are written in all the different positions here. So moving on, trying to keep this video from going too long with still giving you all the information you need. So the next one, we say alif ba ta tha jim ha kha. So now we have these kind of pot belly ones. Jim ha and kha. Jim ha kha. And here again, these our letter group and they all function the same so if we want to write these together um, we can say so we put the dots like that so this becomes Jahakha 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 And you'll notice that the first one it will start like that when it's in an intermediary position it will be like that and then connect on to whatever's next and then in the final position the whole belly comes down. So we might make this one as ha khaja ha khaja ha khaja. Again, these don't mean anything. They're just for demonstration. Ha khaja ha khaja. So that is how it works. And if we want to look at a real Arabic word here, because you know, that's always fun, we can learn some vocabulary at the same time. We can go with this word, which is Hajj. Hajj. Okay. That is the pilgrimage. Al Hajj. Al Hajj. Al Hajj. Okay. And so moving on, Alif Ba Ta Tha Jim Ha Kha Dal Dal. Go to the next grouping. So we have Dal and Thou. And I hope you guys are able to see this just fine. Um, dal and Thou. And I hope my handwriting is good enough there. <clears throat> dal and Thou. So these here are also a letter group. Um, they both function similarly. So the interesting thing about this letter is that 
this is how it is in the initial um, and it will not connect after it but it will allow something to connect to it okay so when you put two of them or three of them together it looks something like this so da 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 so let's look at some real words with these letters um, how, let me think of oh So jeddad, 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 and this means it's an adjective meaning something is new, and it's uh, in the plural form. So there's a group of things that are new, jeddad, or judud, jeddad or judud. I hear both, jeddad or judud. So here dal, dal, jeddad, jeddad. The singular version would be jadid, jadid. And that would look like so j deed. And you'll notice nothing connects after, but it will connect before. So j deed. J deed. I hope that makes sense. Move it on. Down thou ra zay. So here ra Zay. Ra and Zay. Now, if you haven't noticed, a lot of these letter pairings um, or letter groups, the only thing that is different between them is dots. You have a dot on bottom or you have a dot on top, something of that nature. And otherwise, they function just the same in the word, the way they connect. Um, and in linguistic studies uh, that they've done, they figured out that these subtle differences here um, that apply in Arabic make the Arabic script very, very hard to learn. And it's very right side uh, dominant of the brain. So people who um, you know are learning the Arabic script for the first time, um, it may take quite a while to get used to being able to read it quickly and fluently because um, you literally have to build new brain structures and really get used to your brain using the right side a lot more. Um, if you want to look at this in a bigger broader picture I think one of the some of the reasons why science and math are very um, prized in uh, Arab countries they uh, being a doctor, medical doctor, tabib or a mohandas a engineer are very um, honorable professions in Arab society very much so where if someone is a doctor or an engineer they will refer to them as the title tabib or mohandas um, almost all the time like it's nothing um, it's very very common to see that um, it's a very prestigious title um, and, I, and I think because Arabs are using their right side of the brain a lot more. So, moving on. Don't want to get too much off topic here. So these ones um, are kind of similar to the ones we were before, where something can connect to them, but it, nothing will connect after. So, we can write a word. Zarara. Zarrara, Zarrara, okay, Zarrara. So nothing connects after, but you may be able to connect something to it. So there's a, a name here that we can do, and this is using all the letters we learned already. Baz, Baz, Baz. So ba alif za bez. You notice the alif doesn't connect afterwards, so bez. 
Um, one word we could do here. Zuh, ziha, ziha. So zuh, ziha, zuh, ziha, and this means um, to crawl. Um, it's not like the crawling that babies do on their hands and knees, but where you, it's more like the military crawl where you're just using your front two arms. Zuh ziha. Um. A common Arabic name is Zaid. 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 Sorry if my handwriting is a little goofy because I'm doing it on this board here. Um, let me think of a... So, there's a one name here. It comes to my mind. So it's Bardizba. 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 So you'll notice that it will connect to the from the word before it. So bar dizba. And that's dal, so it doesn't connect. Bardizba. Bardizba. And that's a, a given name of uh, Persian origin. Bardizba. Bardizba. Dal dal ze. A seen sheen. So, moving on to the next ones. We have seen, and we have sheen, seen and sheen. And these ones are also a pair. They're related here. Seen and sheen. So. These ones work a little bit different. In the initial spot, they're going to look like this. And in the middle part, they will look like that. And in the final part, like so. And there's the three dots, so we'll say sa sha sa. Sa sha sa. Sa, sha, sa. Okay. And if you haven't noticed already, Arabic is written from the right to left. Sa, sha, sa. Okay. Sa, sha, sa. So you have like these three little waves, and it goes connects to the next thing in the middle spot. It'll connect three little waves, and it'll connect to the next thing. Then We'll have, it'll be connected, three little waves, and then you get this big loop or bowl or whatever. I'll bring that a little bit closer. Um, you're probably going to want to try to load this in HD if you can, even if you got to wait for it. Um, so that way you can see it the best you can. And that's why I try to make my videos in HD as much as possible. Yeah, new technology. I remember when I was first on YouTube, uh, HD wasn't really a thing. <laughs> By the way, um, I've had the same whiteboard for like six years, if you haven't noticed. This is the same whiteboard that I've used in all of my videos ever. Um, as you can tell, it looks kind of beat up right now. Um, I just cleaned it. My son wrote with a permanent marker on it, and I had to use a rubbing alcohol and different things to clean it. So <laughs> it's been through a lot, but I use this. I've taught classes out of my house with this whiteboard. I've made all my YouTube videos with this whiteboard. I've taught classes over Skype, language classes over Skype with this board. It's been through a lot. So moving on, we did seen sheen, sawed, laud. How about sawed and laud? So, we have the letter Sawd and 
reward. By the way, um, if you're really paying attention, um, you'll notice how handwritten um, these can look different. Um, and I'll explain some more variations later on as we keep going through Arabic lessons. Um, but saw and laud, and the way that I stroke everything too. I studied Arabic calligraphy um, for a little while. Um, so the way that I stroke it is the way that you should also try to um, stroke the letters because it's the proper way to do it. Um, and it's going to make them look a lot better. My handwriting's not the best. For be the first to say that, um, hence why I don't do Arabic calligraphy. <laughs> but um, the way I stroke it is the way that it's supposed to be done. Um, that's the prescribed, you know, fashion. Um, but of course, you don't have to do it that way. Moving on. So, in the initial position, these letters will look something like that, and they'll connect to the next one. That's how they look like in the intermediary position. And this is how they end. Kind of did that a little bit too much there. So we could do, I like blog, so I'll put two of them. So subbub, subbub, or subbubba, 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 or subbub, or subbub. <laughs> I just love that sound. <laughs> Subbold. So that is how it would look like in each um, position. So so blah So these ones I remember it took me such a long time to learn how to write them. And I you know I had to have a calligraphy teacher really kinda go over it with me. But you stroke down and over like that. And that's, I guess, the proper way. That's where they look the nicest. So, just like that. And this one has a dot. And this here is another uh, letter group. And it's important to memorize these letter groups, keep these, you know, I mean, they're kind of self evident because they all look the same, but it's important for knowing and how they change in the you know, word, whether they start the word in the middle or at the end. So it's pretty important there. So, moving on. So, that is how it would look. Put a dot on that one. So, ta va ta. So that's kind of how it looks like. Um, there's really no, nothing comes off the end or anything like that. Um, pretty straightforward, I think, these ones. So we'll just leave it at that. And then. So, Alif Beta, Thajim, Hacha, Del, Del, Rose, Sin, Shin, Sor, Ba, Ta, Sor, Ba, Ta, Va, Ain, Rain. So, Ain, Rain. These ones are fun. So, that's Ain. And that's Rain. With the dot on top. Hope you guys can see that. My handwriting, again, is not probably the best. That's the thing about handwriting, it's kind of, uh, you know, not so standardized, it's nice typing with a computer, it's not so, you know, perfect. Um, so yeah, these are language pairs. Ein um, Rhein, oh, I erase these ones so you don't get confused. Ein Rhein. And so these ones um, kind of look like the pot belly ones, they got a little pot belly there at the bottom, but they work quite differently. So when they start a word, you're going to see this little mabobber in the middle. You'll see that type of deal. And then at the end, you'll see something like that. So we'll say, <laughs> Isn't that fun? 
start out that and the intermediate it does something like that and then at the end it does something like that so I'm gonna bring it up here close so you can take a good long look at it different forms of these letters so you can see them in isolation you can see it in the middle the beginning and the end Ein rein, uh, was it? Kof, kef. So, let me just make sure I'm not skipping over any of them. Alif, ba, ta, tha, jim, ha, kha, dal, dha, ra, zay, sin, shin, sor, ba, ta, dha, ein rein, fa. Kof, kef. So, fa. I think we'll go with fa. Fa is in a grouping of its own. Sorry. Little fa. It's got no friends. So that is what fat looks like. I'll try to drop bigger. Fat. I don't know if you can see that. And so fat, it would start out looking something like that. And then something like that. And then something like that. So, fa fa fa, fa fa fa. So you'll notice at the end it keeps its little tail diddly bob there. So fa fa fa, fa fa fa. So, bring that up close here so you can see it in all of its different forms. So fa. And so we'll be able to start going over Arabic words next time, make some sentences. So we'll start the book Durus al Lughur Arabiya from uh, from Jamia al Medina Nawra. So that is the Arabic. Yeah, Arabic language lessons from Al Medina University. Jam Yaptim Medina. And the author of the book, he's got a PhD in linguistics and Arabic language. So I really like the way he's got the book laid out. It really progresses really nicely. Starts out very easy, progresses nicely. And it's yeah, a great book. It's not too much too fast. Hopefully. <laughs> so, fat, and then we'll do qaf. So now fat and qaf, they kind of look the same, but they really function differently. So let's say this line, um, here's what they use for like handwriting when they're teaching kids in school. Um, fat would be written something like this. See that? How it lays on the bottom of the line, um, and then cough. Cough is going to look more like this. It goes below the line. See that? Fat versus cough. So I'm going to erase all this. Hopefully you can see, understand what I mean there. But the bowl or the tail of cough goes low, and it's kind of more curvy. So here we have cough, 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 and so cough, it will start out like this, and it makes goes a big loop up high, higher than fat typically, cough, and then it will loop down below like that, like that, you can see that, cough, cough, cough or 
So, um, so we might write it like this. Um, So that's what it would look like in its different positions. It's like something like that. Off. I hope that my handwriting is readable. So, so off, and then we have calf. And this one, it, it will change a lot here. So that's what it looks like isolated. Calf. Um, but when it starts out, you got this thing going. Okay. Intermediary, you got something like that going. And then it'll end like that. So, ka ka ka. Ka ka ka. Okay, I'm going to bring that up closer so you kind of get a better idea. Um, let me write it nicely here, and I'll write it big for you so you can see, see the proper way it usually looks. There's probably a much better um, diagram there. So, let me show it to you. This one sometimes gets to be a little bit tricky. A little bit harder to do it handwritten. <laughs> so there, hopefully you can see it in its different forms in the beginning, middle, and end. So you notice at the end it's got a tail straight up and down with the tail, a little squiggly line. But in the beginning, it kind of almost is like backward S or something. So, ka -ka -ka. so that's calf. And that's like the regular K sound in English. So, then we'll have, so we have cough, calf, lamb. So don't be tricked here. Lamb, it kind of looks the same almost as, as calf without the squiggly line, but it functions pretty different when it's in the beginning, middle, and end of a word. So, So that's kind of what it looks like, um, three of them in a row there, la la la. So you'll notice that um, at the top, there's kind of this, almost looks like a hook. Um, that is usually put there um, just to make it more dif differentiated from other letters, make it more distinct. Um, it's in the middle letter, sometimes they put a small one there, I don't know if you can see that, sometimes they put like a small hook at the top. But a lot of times it's omitted, so you got to be careful. So the only difference from the alif in the middle is that the lamb, it connects both ways, where the alif doesn't let anything connect after it. So that's something you got to kind of pay attention to. Um, so I'll write it. Sometimes it'll look just like this. And you'll notice the final one, it goes down low. So that's how it looks like, and it's different parts of the word. So this is going to take a while to get used to. Um, since this is YouTube, I'm trying to be quick and make a short video for you guys. And you can rewind it, pause it, do whatever you need to do with it. Um, but usually when I'm teaching people Arabic in person or over Skype or something like that, we're going to go over a lot of words and just practice reading them, practice pronouncing them. Um, just a lot of them will be fake words 
and that's typically how they would teach in like a madrasa setting in an Arab country. Um, that's how they start to teach little kids how to like read and those types of things. Is they have some books and maybe I can show you one of them later. I got all, most of my books are packed up right now because I'm in the process of moving still. Um, but there are some books like um, Ta'lim al Huruf al Arabiya. Um, that's one that's pretty popular that they use here in Minnesota for teaching uh, how to read and write uh, just the Arabic letters. Um, so we ended with Lam. So Qaf, Kaf, Lam, Meem. So we'll go with Meem. This is a fancy one too. So Meem. As you can see there, it's got a like a tail that goes down. It almost looks like to me, it looks like someone's mouth. And then they got this big, long, drooping lip that goes all the way down. <laughs> That's kind of what it always looked like to me. Meme. So, it'll start a word like this. Okay. Go through. And then it'll end a word like that. So, I hope you can see that. So, you can see how isolated it looks different than when it's actually attached. And so it basically becomes like a circle um, in the middle um, in the beginning has a circle that attaches to the next one and then at the end it makes a circle and then it's got this long tail that goes down below the word. So let me write it here. Like this. So that's how it would connect. Just like that meme. Then we have noon. Noon is a good one. I'm not talking about the time of day. I'm talking about the letter. And this one, it's not a bold letter, although it may be easily confused with the bold letters, but the bottom of it goes way, way down further, and it's more narrow. So, in all the different positions, it looks like this. So na 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 na, and this you'll see it kind of has a similar construction almost to the bold letters, um, but you'll notice in the initial and the middle, um, you know it's just basically kind of like sticks that pop out of there, but they're connected. So na na na, then at the end you have this bowl that's narrow and it goes below. So na na na. So. We have Qaf, Kaf, Lam, Mim, Noon, Ha. So Ha, Ha, you'll see it written uh, different ways isolated. Sometimes it's represented just as a circle, a small circle. Some other times they'll write it like this isolated. So it just kind of depends. I see both. And um, this one is kind of a little bit trickier to write took me a long time to um, figure out how to write it. Um, you know, it took some practice. Um, so that's what it looks like isolated. And so below, I'm going to start to put it all into a word. So this one can get quite interesting. Um, you can see here how it starts out. So ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. So if you didn't catch this, I'm gonna try to show you how to write it. Um, so I'm gonna try to draw it bigger so you guys or write it bigger so you guys can see it. But start out like you're making a circle, and then you make a smaller circle in it. So uh, what I think of is those, uh, you know, loops in a roller coaster where you go upside down and such. You see that there? So that's how it looks like in the initial stage. And then it makes a figure eight in the middle. Like that. Makes a figure eight in the middle. And then at the end, it comes up 
and then does that type of thing. Almost looks like an A in the English language. See that? Beginning, middle, and final. And sometimes, you know, they might do calligraphy things, make it look a little bit different. Um, so when you're reading, it might take a little while to get used to it. Um, same thing that they do, they do that with meme and some of the ha uh, ha gene ones too. They do some tricky stuff when they actually write whole words sometimes. And it just depends. Um, you know, there's different um, styles that Arabic script is written in, just kind of like you have different styles of how it's ri been written, um, you know, in the history of the English language. You know, we have like our everyday handwriting. The letters look different when they're typed and printed. Um, you know, we have the archaic way that English letters were written, you know, in the medieval times. Um, we have cursive and all these different ways that it's written. The Arabic is like that too. They have, you know, different ways that these letters are written. But I'm teaching you the common standard one that's printed in books and that most people, you know, just learn in school. Um, but sometimes they can get a little bit tricky if they want to make it look fancy in books and stuff. Um, so, we just went over ha, so, meem, noon, ha, wow. I'm going to go over wow. Wow. And wow is wow, pretty cool. So, it'll start out just like this. And here again, it's one of those where nothing connects after it. So, to, just to give an example, I'll put a lamb here and then a wow. Just so you can see something connected to it. Um, and then nothing would connect after. So, if we want to put here ha. So lau, <clears throat> this would be pronounced as lau, lau in Arabic, and it means tablet. Um, so, or inscription, but I think tablet's probably a better translation. And I'm not talking about the computer tablets that people carry around nowadays. I mean the original tablet, which is a stone tablet that people wrote on. So lau, so you can see it doesn't connect to the thing after it. Um, it just only connects to the thing before it. Low. So that's wow. Pretty, pretty easy. And then we have yeah. 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 See that? Two dots underneath. Yeah. So how that would work. Does it look something like that? So yeah, 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 yeah. So that's how you say yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have here, how it starts out initially, middle, and the end. So. So that's what it looks like in each position. So to give an easy example, that would be bait or house in Arabic. Bait, bait, bait. So yet yeah, we just went through the Arabic alphabet. Um, I'm not going to do Hamza because Hamza is pretty complicated, um, but it's a pretty I mean, pretty unique letter, and it's really going to stand out when you do see it. Um, so we'll just, uh, I'm just going to let you see it in context as we go along through the lessons, and I'll just point it out and make extra note of it so that you guys are aware of it, because it kind of takes some different forms depending on what's going on there. Um, so yeah, as we go along, we'll, I'll mention when necessary little things about the Arabic script, but so far that's the Arabic script in its different forms, beginning, intermediate, and the ending. Um, so I hope that wasn't too fast. I hope um, you know you can get some benefit out of it and I, I hope that you'll be ready when we start learning real Arabic words. Um, if you haven't noticed, I try to dress up in uh, you know some Arabic culture type things um, to also show you the culture. So this is a 
tarbush, or in English they call it a fez, and it's a Moroccan um, hat. Um, fez is actually a city in Morocco, but the Arabic word is tarbush. Um, that's one Arabic word for it anyways. And this here in Arabic they call it a sibha. Sibha, this is also from Morocco. Here, um, it's like a rosary. Um, and then this is an Emirati, Emirati style dishdasha or thawb or kumis, however people want to call it. Um, basically, a, a, the type of shirts, the long shirts that they wear in Arabic culture. This one is from the Emirates, United Arab Emirates, or like Dubai, um, places like that. They wear it kind of that area. You might see something like this also in Oman or in Qatar. Um, and then the Yemenis, they kind of have a slightly different style where they have like this cord that comes through. Um, so yeah, I'll show you different styles of Arabic clothing because each culture is very different. Um, the Moroccan long shirt is very different than this. Um, so, inshallah, we'll get into this Arabic lessons next time from that El Medina book. And I'll add some other vocabulary and explanations and things too. But I want to stick pretty close pretty close to the book so people can follow along. Um, thank you very much.